Peace. What up, everybody? This is your favorite actor, Hassan Johnson, and you're tuning in to StrictlyHipHop.com. Let's talk about really quick, briefly, homosexuality on screen. Mm -hmm. Now, as of recently, we've been seeing a whole lot of it from the gay scene, gay love scenes intensified from turning on your TV at 4 o'clock p.m. and being able to see, mm -hmm. you know, homosexuality. So it's respectable to me that one time in an interview you said that you wouldn't have a problem playing a gay role. I sure would. One time for my outlet, could you tell us why you wouldn't have a problem with playing um, a, a gay, a gay because man? Because at the end of the day, it's art, right? And then we're artists. So now, you know, and and I would, you know, uh, I guess in, in, in our plight to try to, you know, be as creative as we can be, mm -hmm. it's all right to kind of let your guard down. But I just don't think that you have to do it in such a way where it's, it's as physical as it's becoming. Yes. You know, um... Because really, what was it's, it? It wasn't never really cool to just sh like show too much intimacy on television before. Yes, that's what I said as recently. Because it, that's what goes on behind closed doors. Like it never was really cool to just ex you know exploit what goes on behind closed doors. So now it shouldn't really be any more cool or acceptable because it's you know mm -hmm. of the same sex. Yeah, you know the. Uh, LGBT thing, yeah. you know what I mean, and and it's all right. Like I said, I would be, I play a homosexual role in a heartbeat. Just don't have to be as physical. I don't have to be physical with anybody to convey the message. Yeah, it's more than one ways to skin a cat. Exactly. It's just that's what these people are, are vowing or accepting the goal that. I was going to ask you what, what kind of what type of control do you like? If you can light me a little bit, like if you was, for example, you're given a, a role of a homosexual man, right? Mm -hmm. Can you, do you have the right to, oh no, I'm not doing that. I'm not kissing him. I'm not doing that. Well, it depends, a, right? It, it does, because it just has to be a conversation between like, you know, it's it's a creative thing. Yeah. So it's, you know, so it's, it's, it's one of those kind of conflicts. And as long as everybody could agree to disagree, you can move forward and, and trying to, you know, get mm -hmm. your message across. So I, it's, it's not where it's anything is too much or too little. For it's just what's called for. Mm -hmm. It's just what at the end of the day, everyone collectively agrees is called for, and this this is what we end up seeing. Yeah. So, and at the end of it all, mm. it's all right mm. because that's what from you know front to back office, so to speak, you yeah. know, from production down to talent, that's what everybody agreed on. Mm. So, You're right. you know so, what I mean? Like it, it, it's just for us, and I mean the shock value of it all is really what it's about too. So it's just all for us to just keep our mouths, our jaw, jaws drop. Like yeah, <laughs> yes, I seen the um Blackbird. <laughs> I seen a movie with Monique and Isaiah Washington. Blackbird. I yeah, went to the premiere. Saw that, and I know that was very compelling. It was very right? and like it was a lot to handle. Yeah. You know, I'm talking about butt naked threesome men on men on men scenes like it was intense you know right right but that's but they, what they thought was called for their creative process all yeah. the way from the beginning to end mm -hmm. called for that exactly the, some, the, somewhere down the line the universal line it was appropriate for, yeah for, you know what I mean to, it's in the, it to was showcase in the yeah yeah so yeah for real so how about I'm gonna bring this up because it goes hand in hand with this how about the emasculating of black men in Hollywood? The black men in the dress and red lipstick and the shenanigans and the Wandas and would you do that? If asked, would you put a dress on and a lipstick? I mean, I wouldn't really put too much stock into it as I think some people do. So some just people as do. Much as, some people yeah, so, do. So 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 just as much as I just said that I, I play a homosexual, no problem. Yeah. And and twirl around and snap my <laughs> fingers. <laughs> I mean, come on. Yeah. I put a dress on if it's funny. Yeah, exactly. It <laughs> depends how deeply funny, you look into it. If yeah. it's funny. Now, I think a lot of folks are doing it for the wrong reasons. I'm seeing mm. a lot of these youngsters on these YouTubes and Vines. Like, that's not you, though. You don't really think it's yeah. that funny. You're doing it for these likes for the, and laughs and upvotes and what have you. And, yeah, you know, like, you know, some stuff is sticking to the wall, mm. but everything's not. Mm. And you see, it's like, some people compromising themselves and yeah, integrity. Yeah, compromising their integrity be, to, to be to cool. To cool. Which is, whew, be, what would be your advice now? It's, it's content.
all about content. People just respect ownership. Mm. So if you want to act and what you're doing isn't getting you where you want to go fast enough, take control. Mm. You know, sit Get down, busy, sit down with yourself. someone and write us. Like, you know, big up the Cloud9 TV and them cats uh, over at The Money and Violence. Big up. They just picked the camera up and went and learn as you go. My big bro Ruben says right now. It's the DIY, do it yourself era. Uh, yes, it is. It sure is. And I've been and I've been preaching the, you know, take the back route, go through the back door, go through the side door. You can't just run up and knock on the door. Yeah. Now, I've, I've said that since I've been in the game, but it's really do it yourself. No, it, it is. And um, money and violence is a perfect example of perfect. That. It's perfect. The, it's, because now it's the it's the, uh, you know, the like talk about vulnerability. Hmm. Yeah, the most vulnerable it is. No one has this previous experience. Yeah. Filmmaking, acting, directing, none of that. All with one camera. Come on. One it's, camera. It's, they they br- that's brilliant. Because it it's brilliant. like they said, you know what? They just started, they embarked on something and finished it. Mm-hmm. Now, I just think about how many times in the world that people done started something and ain't finished it. And we'll never, we won't be we'll talking never, about it like exactly, right now. Exactly. You got to. Keep at it. You have to keep at and it. That's all it is. Have faith in it. Believe in yourself and your team, and you will rise. Yeah, I mean, nothing's just regular anymore. You mm-hmm. just can't do things. It's not like yo, go to school, get your diploma, college degree, and get a job. Just you know, that's come on. It's not mm-hmm. even. It's not even idealistic it's anymore. Not, Isn't it's that not. something? It's not. So you're from Staten Island, New York. Tell me what Staten Island means to you. I mean everything. My struggle, my grind, success. I definitely owe it all to here because that coming from Staten Island, we was always expected to finish last. Mm. I mean, since, you know, the Wu got in and made a staple in the game and, you know, Prince Rakim, a.k.a. RZA, he's, you know, I remember one song, he said something with something Staten Island. They say we soft and smiling, but if we smiling, then our fronts are shining, blunts are being passed and the guards <laughs> are rhyming. Like, uh-huh. yeah, we chilling. <laughs> what y'all talking about over? We, yeah, listen, we chilling. Man, mm-hmm. We getting this money too. <laughs> this, we just over this bridge in that ferry ride. Don't get it twisted. But anyway, though, it's this. We let them sleep on us for years. Yeah, we did. And it's like, talented. you know, we bust through the door and it's a lot of talent out here. Always has, always will. Shout mm-hmm. out to the Mac Wilds making a big, you know, surge with the music. Yeah, fuzz. shout out to him. You know what I mean? You shout know. out to everybody trying. Oh, everything know? is that. And I'm, you know, and I'm I'm born in Brooklyn like most people. I mean, this generation more Staten Island natives. Yeah. But, you know, I went to school here. This is where I was raised. So, it's time for Yeah, this Staten is it for me. Mm-hmm. Definite, you know. Park Hill all the way to the harbor. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. I can't even sugarcoat that. So if me and you was to stand on top of a building in Park Hill, 55, you said? Yeah. If we was to stand on top of a building and we were overlooking your career and we could like, like an iPad, we could grab moments. Ooh. What would be the two most monumental or moments of importance to you? Which ones would you grab? The two, like if we were standing on the roof, we look at that. Roof, it'd, be that it'd be that lunchroom, 1995, mm-hmm. when uh, my boy girlfriend gave me that flyer for the clock is mm. open call and dared me to go because, you know, I'm, I was Mr. <laughs> Wanna Be on TV but wasn't doing nothing about it. She wasn't feeling that. Like, well. she really came with this crumpled up piece of paper. You want to be on TV, go to Spike Lee's audition. Wow. And I was like, all right. You know, did one of them scratch the back of my neck, look around like, yo, who coming with me? And everybody did one of these look away. I went and the rest is history. And the other one was 1997, May 16th, when my daughter was born in um St. Vincent's Hospital. Wow, beautiful. That definitely put me on the right track. I really beautiful. probably wouldn't be sitting here talking. <laughs> 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 but that, that's those two moments. Okay, so if, if you could depict any great in a biopic, who would it be? Like, if you could play anyone, who would you pick? Who would I pick? I've had a lot over the years, and then uh, <laughs> just been let down. But probably probably that MLK. Probably, uh, probably would be able to get that off. <laughs> yeah. Obama, maybe? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> I just, That's hard. I'm an OG dude. Mm-hmm. Obama's a new schooler. Like, we could have damn near been, you know, partners. Yeah. 
So he got a swag I don't think I could. Could. Yeah. Could I can't imitate. really. I don't know if yeah. I can duplicate that Obama swag. <laughs> Something serious. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to have to, yeah, you know, deject that deposit. <laughs> okay. What's the funnest movie set or series that you worked on? Funnest. Great, greatest times. Greatest times? Oh, The Wire. Definitely. Too I many. Imagine too I had many, a too ball. Many. Too many stories. Oh, I could imagine. It's too many. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know. Okay, so. <laughs> that's another interview, like, for real. See, we got dates and times. And, oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Patrick Ewing, Patrick Ewing, Patrick Ewing, Patrick Ewing, Patrick Ewing, Patrick Ewing.